welcome 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 back to my channel my name's Claire so today we're talking all about jersey fabric so if you've never sewn with jersey fabrics they can be really daunting really intimidating you might hear people who are experienced with them to say just dive in they're really easy they're not as difficult as you think and while all those things are true it can still be intimidating if you've never sewn with them. Perhaps you've had an experience where you have tried to sew with them and it hasn't worked out for whatever reason and you've kind of avoided it. This video is going to really help you because I'm going to break down and give you some real actionable tips that are going to take you forward and increase your confidence tenfold. So before we get into the top tips, I just want to talk about what is jersey. So jersey is a knit type fabric. So think of your knitting, how it loops into each other in order to grow. It's exactly the same way with jersey, but on a smaller scale. That means that because it's interlooped, it then stretches, which is different to woven, which is interlocked. So it weaves up and down. You've got the warped and the weft and they weave into each other and that makes it stable for wovens. So jersey has a lot more versatility. So there's two kinds of jersey. So you've got single knit and you've got double knit and it's just the way they're knitted together. So there's lots of different kinds of jersey fabric you can use. You can use cotton, you can use viscose, ponty roma, scuba, poly, wool, silk, bamboo, even velvet, but they basically come from four different sources. There you have silk, cotton, viscose and poly. Jersey Fabrics was first produced in the Channel Islands on a little island called Jersey, not a million miles away from me, as you can see on this map. It was first produced in medieval times and used for men's sweaters, so fishermen's sweaters and their underwear as well. In 1916, Coco Chanel bought it back with a vengeance where she made it into women's dresses and coats as well. I'm going to start off with a question that comes up a lot. Do I really need a serger or can I use my sewing machine? You don't need a serger. It can help once you're a little bit more experienced, but you absolutely do not need a serger. As long as you've got a sewing machine, even a basic sewing machine that can do a zigzag stitch or a lightning stitch, then you are good to go with jersey fabrics on your machine. There are a few things that you need to think about when you're sewing on a sewing machine that perhaps you don't need to think about with a serger, but that is to make sure you're using the right needles. So you either want to use a jersey or ballpoint needles. I don't know that there's much difference between the two. I use them interchangeably. And the reason you want to do that is that on the point of the needle, it's more rounded. It goes down through the stitches instead of piercing the actual fabric as it would do in a woven. So that's why you need to use jersey or ballpoint needles for your jersey fabrics. And the other thing that's really important if you're going to sew jersey on your machine is that you use the right fit. If you just use a generic foot, then the fact what will happen is the fabric will stretch under the foot because the pressure will be too much for it. So if you invest in a walking foot, and this is something I need to do, I did have one and I don't know where it's gone, so I am gonna have to purchase another one. But I, So I haven't got one to show you, but I will put it up on screen what it looks like. A walking foot is really good because basically, when you sew with a normal foot, you've got no grip on the actual foot. The grip is on the feed dogs on the actual machine. So where the feed dogs will drag the fabric through, the foot is not dragging anything. And so the two pieces of fabric become a little bit disjointed. So if you use a walking foot, it does actually have feed dogs on the bottom of the top part of the foot. So then you've got your feed dogs on your machine and on your needle, and it's dragging the fabric through at an even rate. And also because it's an open foot, there's not so much pressure on it. You can also release the pressure on your sewing machine if your sewing machine has that function 
that might be why you get wavy seams when you sew jersey. If that does happen, do invest in a walking foot. You can buy them cheap on Amazon. So the next point to share with you is that the stretch of the fabric really matters. Now, this is something that I just didn't pay attention to, and I still struggle to pay attention to it, if I'm honest, but I always, always, always have a better sewing experience when I concern myself with the stretch of the fabric. When you're sewing the stretch garment, if you look in the instructions, it will tell you the optimum amount of stretch that you need. It is so important that you do not ignore this. Often, I just think, oh, I've got a stretch fabric, that'll do. And then afterwards, it might be too tight or it might be too loose and not have recovery. And it's just because I haven't paid any attention to the instructions. So don't make my mistake. Make sure you take care to be concerned with the stretch. So if you go with a pattern that has a specific stretch requirement and then your fabric has less stretch, your garment is probably not going to fit you because that extra stretch means the difference between a size or two often, maybe more at times. Also, whether you choose a two-way or a four-way stretch, now I did talk about that in my uh, fabric video as well, but the two-way stretch is when it stretches one way, usually horizontally, and four-way stretches when it stretches vertically as well. And so that can be really, really important. So the next tip might be a little controversial. Let's see in the comments down below. Um, but you don't always have to do a zigzag stitch. So a zigzag stitch when you're sewing jersey is there because your fabric stretches. So if you pull a straight stitch seam like that, it will pop. The stitches will pop and it will not be very good for your garment. But if you stretch a zigzag stitch, then it will stretch with the fabric. So in any areas where you are going to have stretch, so if you're pulling it over your neck, you'll want stretch. You'll probably want it stretchy under your arms because you move about if you had a raglan sleeve you'd want it stretchy there but in areas where it doesn't stretch or you don't want stretch then it's absolutely not necessary to do a zigzag stitch so for example i never do a zigzag stitch on my shoulder because i always stabilize my shoulders with a bit of organza ribbon and that is woven and doesn't stretch anyway and you do not want your shoulders to be stretching out so I always do a straight stitch there. And invariably, if I've got a loose hem, so if it's like an A-line or something like that, or even bigger, then I will do a straight stitch on the hem. If you're wearing a close-fitting garment, you'll definitely want a zigzag on the hem. But going on from the last tip, the next tip is to always stabilise seams that may stretch out. So I mentioned my shoulders. As I say, I always stabilise my shoulders. So say you're making a dress with a waist seam, you'll want to add some stabilisation to the waist to the waist seam because the weight of the fabric with a dress will weigh it down and the waist seam will stretch down. My next tip for you is a biggie. It's a real biggie. And it's a biggie because I've only really just learned it in the last six months or so. And that is to stay away from cotton jersey for anything other than t-shirts or underwear. Maybe that's also a controversial statement, but that is my own experience. So earlier last year, I made some Antrim dresses by Itch to Stitch and I made the grave error of using cotton jersey. Now, cotton jersey is lovely. It feels good on the skin. It's very comfortable and it's easy to sew in most cases. But it stretches like a beast. So you may remember from my Antrim dress, I had to cut off the skirt because it had become uneven. And I leveled it all out on the edge of my seat. If you haven't seen that video, do check it out. It's hilarious. But from the edge of my seat, I leveled it out, not really knowing what I was doing, but I got there in the end. And within maybe a week, it had stretched out again. And I just ended up not fixing it. And I've got it somewhere for scrap fabric or I sent it to the charity or something like that. I can't remember what I did now. 
So if you're cutting a pattern that's got a lot of weight to it, so say a dress or something that's cut on the bias, then cotton jersey is going to stretch out like a beast. Please, please, please do not forget this and waste your fabric. I should have made t-shirts with my lovely cotton jersey, but I didn't. And actually, I just sewed a couple of t-shirts. Can't show you one of them right now because it was a test that's not released. But I did the blue one, which was my DIY t-shirt, Trace Your Own T-shirt tutorial. And actually, it wasn't as easy to sew as I thought it would be. And that was quite a thick cotton organic cotton jersey. The next one is also super important. It's that your neckband should lay flush to your skin. I can't tell you how many neckbands I've seen where they stick out a little bit. Even in ready to wear, you see it with people who wear ready to wear, they've got these neckbands. And I've seen it on people who wear quite expensive clothes as well. But it should not sit out. If it's sitting out, the neckband's too big for you. So it's a super, super easy fix. All you've got to do is your neckband piece should be shorter than the hole that it's going into. Because Jersey fabric stretches, it will stretch into the hole. So it really depends on the fabric and how much stretch you've got. But generally speaking, I reduce my neckband piece by about 15 to 20% of the hole that I'm putting it into. And that just helps it to lay flush. Now, it is a real balancing act because if you've got the neckband too short, it will pucker as you pull it in and look not very nice. But if you strike that balance between short enough that it lays flat, but not too short that it puckers, then fantastic. And that's just something that will come with experience. So it's just something that you will learn as you go. If you are looking for instruction on that, check out my Laundry Day Tea Sew Along. I go into really good detail about how to create a neckband, a jersey neckband. And that would be so, so helpful if you've never sewn one. I know I've got a lot of feedback saying it's been really helpful. So do check that out. All the links I mentioned will be down below. The next tip might seem like an obvious one, but it won't be to complete beginners. And that is that binding is not the same as a band. Now, if you've been sewing for even a short length of time, you might know that that is that might seem really obvious but just because it's obvious to some it's not obvious to everyone it certainly wasn't obvious to me when i first started sewing binding rather than a band so a band is what is attached in the round so you will see that on t-shirts most of the time a binding is what wraps around the edge of the fabric rather than is stitched all in a circular piece Sometimes bands can be attached when they're not circular, such as if you are sewing them at the shoulder seam, but in the main, they are attached in two different ways. So with a band, you would fold the fabric on itself and then attach that. But with the binding, you would directly lap it around the edge of the fabric and sew that like you would some bias binding. Although with bias binding, you'd cut the fabric on the bias and you don't need to do that with jersey fabric because it's already stretchy. It's important to know this because if you're following instructions and it tells you to put a binding on and you absentmindedly put a band on, you're gonna get different results because they're applied in different ways with um, different things for example with binding you wouldn't need to stretch it in with a band you would so my next tip is to be aware that different types of fabric although they might all have the same stretch capacity will behave differently for example as mentioned cotton is stable but it will stretch on the bias viscose is drapey and more difficult to sew so scuba is thick and very warm to wear, whereas a knit fabric, which is kind of open weave, will be relaxed and breathable. So it really depends what you're looking for from your garment and also what the pattern tells you to choose. That is all going to depend on what fabric you go for. For example, if I was sewing the cocoa by Tilly and the Buttons, 
which is a jersey dress with an A-line shape. I wouldn't choose viscose because it won't hold its shape, it will just drape. If I was looking for a lightweight summery t-shirt, I wouldn't sew it with scuba, etc, etc. You get the impression that I'm trying to draw here. So just be mindful of what you're sewing with and choose the appropriate fabric for the appropriate pattern and the appropriate outcome that you're also looking for. So this tip is super important and that is when you're cutting your fabric out, do not let the fabric fall off the end of the table. I'm guilty about this one. This one, I am, will hold my hands up to this one, but it will stretch the fabric out. I do try these days not to do that, but it was certainly something I was guilty of in the earlier days of sewing. And also room is of the essence and my tables are usually got 20 different things on. You don't want to see my table over here right now. But they've usually got lots and lots of different things on them. Clear your table off completely. Lay your fabric out. Just this if you've got a table. You might be working off the floor. In which case, clear the floor. Make sure there's nothing there. Although you can't. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? You cannot hang fabric off the floor. <laughs> This only applies if you're using a table, people. Remove everything off the table and just have your fabric and roll it up in like a roll of fabric on the end of your table. Take out as much as you need, pin it, do your thing, do your, all your stuff, but do not let it fall off the end of the table. And that's just because it stretches out and will distort your fabric and then your pattern won't lay right once you're wearing it. This tip is something I don't do and something I wish that I had done in the past and I think it might have saved some of my garments and that is to wash your fabric as soon as you get it. Wash it on a fairly cool heat and when you've made your garment continue to wash it on a cool heat, not a high heat because if you wash it before you cut into it, if it's going to shrink and Jersey does have a habit of shrinking, then it will happen before you cut your garment and won't affect you once your garment's made. As long as you continue to wash your garment in the same way that you washed it before. I'd even go as far as putting it through the wash a couple of times just to double check that any shrinkage has already happened. And as I spoke about in my fabric video, do not dry your clothes if you can help it. Or if you do dry them, dry them on a very low heat and that's just gonna preserve your clothes for much longer. Jersey can be an elusive fabric for many who fear it, but if you take on board the tips I've given you today, you can have fun with it and I promise you will not look back. So I haven't focused on surges in this video and that's just because I don't believe you need one to be able to sew jersey. However, if you do find your sewing jersey quite a lot, it can be a worthwhile investment. And so I will be talking about my serger and surges in general in an up and coming video. So do look out for that. So what are you waiting for? dive in it's time leave me a comment down below and let me know how you get on with it if you give it a go are you more willing to give it a go now you've watched this video i would love to know you know the drill if you enjoyed this video and you did get value from it do hit that like button that really helps my channel subscribe for more videos like it and i will catch you in the next one i hope you're having a great time sewing until next time bye for now